welcome back to my channel thank you so so much for being here so i have a very fun video planned for you guys today because i'm gonna be talking about 10 or 11 things that i wish i knew before moving to france so as you guys know i've lived in paris for around six years and i'm, I'm an american um and I really think that it's interesting to learn things as you go. However, if I could have learned these things a little bit faster, I think it would have made my life a lot easier. So I thought that I would share those with you guys today because I'm always getting asked in my DMs about tips on moving to France, advice, finding apartments, all that. So if you guys are also moving abroad, moving to France, first of all, don't forget to subscribe. And I hope that you guys can find these useful, these little tips, things I've learned or if you guys just want to laugh I think that this video is gonna be kind of funny so <laughs> let's get into it so I guess the first thing that I wish I had known before moving here was around making friends with the locals I don't know why but I just had this kind of vision that when I moved here that the Parisians were going to welcome me with open arms and just kind of adopt me and I would make French friends right away and it would just be super easy for me I mean, I had never lived in another country before, so I just thought that, you know, when you move abroad, you just make friends so quickly, of course. Like, I actually remember, like, the first week that I moved here, I was literally, like, walking down the street, and I would just, like, smile at people, and they would look at me like I was insane. But, I mean, part of that was that I was just so happy to be here, and another part was, like, I didn't know how to meet French people, and that's still a question that I get all the time. But it actually took me a really long time before making any French friends, so I wish that I had known how to go about that differently. So, Parisians especially are really notorious, notoriously difficult to become friends with and get into their inner circle. And a part of that is because they have had the same group of friends, a lot of them, since they were like in kindergarten basically, you know? Like they keep their same friend group, and so it's really difficult to enter into that group. And because of that, because I had a really difficult time making French friends, I ended up my first year here making almost exclusively English speaking friends. And I think that it's super easy to stay inside of that kind of expat bubble because it's comfortable, you know, you guys can speak the same language and you also have the same struggles. However, the problem with that is a lot of people who are also expats, they're only here for one year two years and so your friends all end up leaving and you just find yourself like alone and always having to remake friends what i learned is it's really difficult to make friends unless you have a certain cadre where you can get to know each other for example school or when i started signing up for ballet classes or yoga classes you have to have a sort of backdrop um, in which you can make friends because like rarely will I go to a party and like meet somebody that I'm gonna stay in contact with so if you guys are moving abroad and you're wondering how you can make friends um, especially if you're not going to school or you don't have like a certain situation where you can meet people I'd say like try to join clubs like you know if you're into theater try to join like a theater troupe or like you know you just have to have that sort of common ground where you can meet people in like a more organic way <laughs> okay the next thing i'm gonna say is super random but i think it's really something that i wish i had known is that when you call the police here they don't always come and that was like such a surprise to me the first time it ever happened like Luckily, I've never been in a situation where I had like an emergency where like somebody's dying and I had to call like um, You know the police and had to come right away But there have been situations where I wanted to report something and I waited for the police and they just didn't show up um, Maybe this is just something that happens in Paris But let me I, let me know down below if you guys have also had this sort of situation like just like a few days ago I was sitting at home editing a video and I heard like somebody outside my door trying to open the door to my apartment with like a sort of pick or something and at first I thought it was Alex and I was like dang he's having like a really hard time opening the door I mean I wonder what's going on and then it just like I realized like oh it's not him and I look through the peephole and I see my neighbor's 
upstairs they're actually squatters and they've been here for like a few years and they're always having fights and like always causing problems in the building but i see the guy that lives upstairs like trying to like get into my apartment and i'm just standing there like should i see if he like actually can get in or should i like make a noise so after a few minutes of just like looking through the people and watching him actively try to break into my apartment not knowing that i'm home i said kiss kiss you say like i didn't know what to say so i was just like what are you doing and he like ran upstairs really quick so i was like yeah that's fucked up like oh thank god i was home because i mean i don't know if he would have been able to get in but i know that um in paris they have like this, this like weird swipey thing that people use to like break in and i'm like he seemed like he really knew how to pick the lock and stuff so I was kind of like, well, fuck, like, what do I do? So I just called the police to report it. I mean, he didn't actually get to break in because I was home. And they're like, okay, ma'am, we're coming over. And they just never showed up. So, and that's not the first time that that's happened to me where I need to report something and they just didn't come. So, I mean, hopefully for emergencies, it's a little different, but... I mean, I kind of wish I had known that because I was just like sitting here waiting for them to come. I even like got dressed because it was like my day off, so I was wearing PJs. Waiting for the policeman to come and he never came. So yeah, let me know if you guys have also had that experience because I wish I would have known. Ah. Okay, so the next thing that I wish I would have known is surrounding the job market and interview etiquette. So I'm freelance now, thank God out of that but um <laughs> i wish i would have known how different it was around like finding a job and kind of the rules around that because for example in the u.s you can go to school for something and you know for example you could have a degree in psychology and you could find a job that is completely different outside of psychology you know based on experience it's just a lot more open job wise whereas in france i feel like the rule is more you go to school and you find a job related to that field i know so many people who have moved abroad and they've wanted to get a job in something but they weren't able to because they didn't have the proper education that goes along with that i feel like france is a lot more traditional in that sense like whereas i have so many friends in the u.s family members who you know after a couple years they'll change directions in their career and that's not seen as weird and depending on what you do, you can find job postings, for example, on LinkedIn or Indeed.com, you know, whatever. However, I feel like a lot of jobs are found through networking, especially in France. So it's really important to network. And I've noticed that French people that I know are really good at networking and like they're just really good at talking themselves up to like talking about their strengths and like just really good at putting to themselves out there. So even though this particular issue doesn't really concern me now because I am freelance, it's something that I would have definitely had liked to know and another thing, oh my god. So surrounding job interviews. Okay, so job interviews, it's considered really rude during the first few interviews to ask or like even bring up pay. And I didn't know this because, I mean, my logic is you know, I don't want to waste your time. So I have like a certain amount that I want to be paid. So if we're not on the same page right away, then like, I don't want to go to like three interviews and then find out that you're going to be like grossly underpaid. So I remember when I was doing nannying on one of my first job interviews, like at the end, I was like, so should we talk about like money? Like how much, you know, because it can really differ a lot. And then I found out later from one of my friends, like, oh, you asked her that on the first job interview? Like, oh my God, like that scene is so rude. I was like, but why? Like, it's just seen as like super rude to ask about payment or like about your salary right away because it seems like you care more about that than the job. But I just look at it as like, I don't think money should be taboo. But anyway, that's something that I wish I would have known. So the next thing that I wish I had known is surrounding French and the French language, speaking to French people. Um, it's actually really funny because I'm a part of a lot of Americans in Paris. Why am I talking? I'm like I'm from, I'm like country, like Americans in Paris. I'm from, I'm a part of a lot of like Facebook groups. And one of the biggest things that I always see people writing in the groups is, why won't French people speak French to me? 
and I actually had the same mentality when I moved to Paris is dang like I really want to improve my French why don't people want to speak French to me like I'll start speaking in French to the waiter he'll immediately go back to English and I get really frustrated about it and I feel like part of that is a courtesy on their part you know like they want to help you out by speaking English and another part of it is like they're required to learn Eng English in school and they want to practice I mean you know and it can be frustrating however if your French isn't stronger than their English, you can't get mad about them switching back to English because the stronger language should win out. So what I wish I had known to make this easier for myself was before moving to France to study French to get at least like an intermediate level because from the moment that you actually start learning French, your life here becomes so much easier. Like I can't stress this enough. Like. You know, going to the bank is easier, shopping is easier, like when you have a problem and like, for example, your plumbing goes out and you have to like call the plumber and you're like, ah, I don't know what to say in French, like all of this. So I definitely would have told myself to get like an intermediate level of French, study French. So if you guys are also moving abroad, I would tell you the same thing, like try and learn as much French as you can before you come which brings me to today's video sponsor which is Langoda as you guys know I love working with them I've worked with them many times in the past because I really believe in their method of teaching which is really focused on getting fluent through speaking with native qualified teachers and what's really exciting is this month they're launching a new challenge which is the Lingoda team challenge where you can learn languages with your friends and also win really amazing prizes like a trip to Europe or donate classes to students in need. So for this challenge you can choose from two options. There is the super challenge which is 35 classes over the course of seven weeks which is five classes a week or you can do the challenge which is 21 classes over the course of seven weeks which is three classes a week. And if you finish 100% of your classes, Lingoda will actually donate 20% of your attended classes to those in need. So you actually can do this challenge alone, but I recommend doing it in teams because then you can qualify for the grand prize trips, like the trips to Europe or 200 classes. So how does one go about building their team? What's really cool is your team can be as low as two players or as high as 12 players. So that means if you just wanna do it with like your best friend, you can just do it with your best friend, or you can have like, you know, your big group of friends do it together. And what's really cool is you don't have to live in the same city or country to be on the same team. For example, if you have a friend in London who wants to do it with you and you live in California, you guys can still be on the same team, regardless of how many teammates you have as well. You can also study different languages at different levels. For example, say you're in intermediate Spanish and your friend is like beginner French, you can still be on the same team and potentially win the prizes. The only thing is you guys have to choose for your team the same amount of intensity. For example, either the super challenge or the regular challenge, be either three classes a week or five classes a week to be on the same team. So if this challenge sounds exciting to you guys, you can sign up by November 1st and use the code purple palace for 10 euros for each member you bring onto your team. You must complete the seven week challenge within 63 days of purchase and until December 20th. So for more info on important dates for this challenge, you can check out the website's link down below. But if not, let's get back to today's video. Okay, getting back into it, the next thing I wish I knew, and I have to mention it even if maybe some of you guys who are into French culture and things have already heard of this, but I absolutely have to mention it because I wish I knew it was the importance of saying bonjour before starting a conversation with a stranger or soliciting help, asking for directions, anything. It's so important to say bonjour before starting the conversation because bonjour is the agreement between two people that we're about to start a conversation. If you just go up to somebody and start speaking to them without saying hello before, they didn't agree to talk to you yet. So it's like you're speaking at them. So for example, say you're wandering around the city and you're looking for the metro and you say, 
you go up to some guy and you say, Excusez-moi, est-ce qu'il y a un métro près d'ici? Eh. You said, Excuse me, is there a metro close by? That's not the way you do it. You have to go up to them and you say, First, Bonjour. Pause. They will then say, Bonjour. Then you can ask the question. Because otherwise, it's just seen as super rude. It's like you're not even... Like they're not even like a person, you're just talking at them. So that's a really big cultural difference because I used to think that if you said excuse me, that that was polite, but you have to say hello first and get their agreement to start the conversation. So that is something that I wish I knew because sometimes if you go up to somebody and you just start saying, you just start that sentence without the bonjour, they will stop you and they'll say bonjour. They'll say, but bonjour, like, oh, hello, like, are you not going to say hi to me first? So, you know, if you're a foreigner, they'll let it pass, but it's definitely annoying to them. So that is one thing that keep in mind, always say the bonjour before any conversation when you're starting a social interaction. The next thing that I really wish I had known is how difficult it truly is to find an apartment. This is a huge issue, especially in Paris because it's a small city and it's not a small city, but you know, compared to like, I'm not even gonna fucking go there because I feel like someone's gonna come for me in the comments and be like, Paris is not a small city. Anyway, compared to like the amount of housing they have for people, Paris is small compared to how many people live here. That's what I wanna say. So, it's really hard to find an apartment even if you have money in the bank, even if you have a savings, you know? So, and the reason for this is they require you to have a French co-signer. So even if you live abroad and you know, your parents could be your co-signer back in the US, it doesn't matter because they want you to have a French co-signer. So one of the requirements is to make three times the rent. So for, say for example, your rent is like 800, you'd have to make 2400 a month, which is kind of crazy. And then on top of that, you would need your French co-signer. So, you know, you could spend like three to four months looking for an apartment. And then when you go to visit the apartment, it's super intimidating because there's like a line of people outside waiting to visit the same apartment as you. And you're like, damn, like my dossier, like my file isn't as good as theirs. And so actually what a lot of people do, like I know so many people that do this is they will actually Photoshop their pay stubs to make it seem like they make like three to four times more what they actually make. I'm not recommending it, you guys. I'm just saying that happens. Uh, because otherwise they can't find an apartment. So like imagine if you're like an honest person and you pay your rent But like all you can find is like a shitty like hole in the wall to live with like rats and okay I'm, I'm like exaggerating, but you know what I mean You know, like that's what people end up having to do to find a place um, and so what I always recommend when people are like, how do you find an apartment is if you're coming to France find an Airbnb first for maybe like three to four months because you can rent them long term. That way you can actually visit places physically. Because the thing is like looking online like um, at Craigslist, Le Bon Coin, PAP, like all of these different websites, there are so many scams and like people being like, oh yeah, you got the apartment, now send me like a thousand euros. And then you're desperate so you send them the money and then they end up scamming you completely. So I'm really happy for the next point because I feel like I've been talking about like a lot of negatives, like the police not showing up and how expensive apartments are and stuff, but we're gonna pass to a positive, a little, a little pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that I wish I had known about before is all of the programs that the government has to help students and young workers. So when I first moved here, coming from the US, we don't get very much help, you know, like, um, there's not that much like government assistance. You know, France is a socialist country, so this is a part of their fabric of their country is helping each other. So some of these programs that I didn't know about at first is the CAF, which if you are a low income student or just anybody actually that is low income, they will help you with your rent. It could be like 200 a month, it could be like 100. 
depending on your rent and it can definitely make a difference especially like if you're a poor student like at the end of the month you know having that extra 200 and you can be a foreign student and get this as well so that's really really cool and talking about apartments earlier and how you need a French co-signer there is this program this government program called Vicel and what they will do is if you're a student they will act as your co-signer and that way if you are a foreigner and you don't have um, a French co-signer you can go through them and that's really really amazing those are things I definitely wish I knew about and those are just a few of the programs that's a really great thing that France does for its residents the next thing that I wish I knew was the importance of staying Zen in high-pressure situations with administration so when you move to France it's a shit show with the visas and the paperwork and everything and you'll send stuff in they'll lose your paperwork or you'll go for the rendezvous at 6 a.m. you'll wait in line only to be told to come back another day it's crazy with administration and I mean even French people will tell you it's extremely unorganized and <laughs> customer service isn't a thing. <laughs> that sounds so fucked up. Not to say it's not a thing, but okay. In the US, there is this like, I'm gonna go talk to the manager mentality where if somebody's rude to you, like they just don't do that because they could lose their jobs. Whereas in France, it's very like, we're all on equal grounding. You know, like, just because I'm the client doesn't mean they're going to be nice to me and they don't owe me anything. Which is something that I guess I had a hard time with in the beginning because I thought that, you know, if I was stressed and, like, I showed them how stressed I was, then that would work in my favor. When in reality, it was the opposite. Like, I remember I had gone back to this one appointment four times because they needed a certain paper and every time it wasn't the right one and... It was just this whole dilemma and I remember sitting in this lady's office and just like breaking down crying like I was like she's just looking at me like dead inside and she's like you should really do some yoga this is what she said to me <laughs> and I'm just like what I should do yoga like this is my life here so I learned that in order to get what you want in France you have to be really persistent you know like if you're missing a paper like the good thing to do is not to cry or freak out, just you have to be very diplomatic. Diplomatic. And the best way to get what you want, in my opinion, is by sending emails because I feel like French people are afraid of paper trails because they don't want anything to be their fault in the end. If you're coming in with receipts, emails after email, like telling them like, hey, I haven't heard back from you, like really, really being kind of annoying in a way about getting what you want that's when i've seen the most results i've learned to make copies of everything and to just be very like keep my cool and to just like be very reasonable and even in a high pressure pressure situation it doesn't help it doesn't help like in any kind of situation to freak out and like cry and be stressed because you know what we just gotta stay on a very high frequency and be zen and laugh it off that's that's one thing i tell myself is just like chill girl chill so the last thing that i wish i had known and oh my god i've had so much fun making this video it's been very therapeutic for me and hopefully very interesting and fun for you guys so i'm gonna leave you with this last one and i really wish i had known that france paris it's what you make it i have so many different friends with so many different lives here. I got my expat friends living the whole Emily in Paris dream, like, you know, like glamorous dinner parties and like living the whole like expat life, like spending their weekends having picnics and like that whole thing. And I have friends that are like underground artists and have like a very modest life, you know, but they have a very pleasurable life. So I feel like I never really understood when people say, Oh, I hate Paris or like I hate this city like it's so disappointing because I feel like Paris and France in general it's just the backdrop to your life you know like it's the setting for the play that story can be different depending on 
who you hang out with, what your expectations are, what you decide to focus on, and how your outlook is on life. You know, like half glass full, half glass empty. I guess what I'm trying to say is it's up to you what kind of experience that you want to have in a country. Like you can choose to look at the positives and like have a very dreamy life, like spend your time like down by the sun, having picnics with friends, drinking wine, looking at the sunset, you know, and like being very appreciative of the life that you have. Or you can just like spend your time in your apartment like never going out. So if I can leave you guys with one piece of advice, if you guys are moving abroad in the future, moving to France, moving to Paris, know that you can create your own reality and don't blame don't be too quick to blame like the city for you know your circumstances for example like i'm guilty of this myself like when i first came to paris i was like uh i don't like it that much like i had like so much culture shock that i think that at first i let myself like stay in this like negative space instead of being really proactive and like you know i'm gonna join this group like i'm gonna do this like i'm gonna go out and meet people you know, like this country, this place is just a backdrop for your life and you get to really create your reality here. So that's one thing I tell myself and that's one thing I'm sharing with you guys um, if you guys are also moving abroad. So that is all that I have for this video. I feel like that was quite a lot. It's going to be very fun to edit, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, if you guys like these type of videos, please let me know in the comments. I feel like I really enjoy them because... Um, since I normally stick to vlogs, it's rare for me to do like a sit down where I'm just like talking and connecting with you guys And I think that's really really fun So if you guys want more videos like this more in this France French culture series Don't hesitate to let me know down in the comments and I'll try to do more videos like this and if you Are an expat living in France no matter where you are in the world Let me know if there's anything that you'd like to add to the conversation because we're all here to learn share and grow together so i love you guys if you enjoy what i do on this channel and you want to support what i do and get extra content like podcast episodes etc you can check out my patreon page link down below as well and i will see you guys in the next video bye, bye.